Good morning, adventurers. Guess what? We're back at the metro station and let's get on this train. history which is where we're gonna start off today this is where we're gonna find a lot of like pop culture stuff the TV stuff that has become synonymous with things that we think of and this building is huge so I wanted to start this in the morning so I could allow for enough time for me to go through it completely because I feel like I'm gonna be here a while as soon as you walk in there's already all sorts of kinds of stuff and there's an IMAX over to the left, right over here, where you can watch different videos, one of which is a panda video. Ah, but look at this. Uh-huh, it's the battle. Now comes the hard part. This isn't on which way to go. This is a great way to start. This goes out to my mom. I'm a little bee. I'm a little bee. Fancy, can't you see? Nobody at home is gonna get that, but my mom will totally get that. This is the area that has the key is for television, so naturally we have Sesame Street and things like that over here. I see something else. And who doesn't remember Bill Nye the Science Guy? next exhibit is really big. It's called Lighting a Revolution. It's hard to see the sign, ironically because of light. So now we're going to head in and see what all this has to do. This is about the Edison era and so naturally there's Thomas Edison. Inside this one room you could literally spend hours browsing through all of the different inventions. There were so many cool things here, from the light bulbs and transformers to modern day appliances and the evolution of how they started out. This room had a little bit of everything and it was very detailed. So if you're coming to Smithsonian, make sure that you allow for plenty of time to browse and read. Did you know that they called Thomas Edison a wizard? because he was an inventor and created so many things, some people referred to him as a wizard of Menlo Park. And these are some of his awesome inventions that he came up with, including light fixtures, um, a lot of different things for electrical systems, and tons of other stuff. This exhibit is chock full of Thomas Edison and his wizarding ways. I feel like I'm seeing Harry Potter. These used to be all in factories and huge to produce enough power from steam to fuel cities and to allow people to have electricity and common things that we don't have to deal with steam for anymore. As we move across the hall, we find America on the Move, which is a massive display of all things transportation, from waterways and railways to cars of all shapes and sizes, this display is super cool, and it's sponsored by General Motors, so you know that they didn't skimp at all. You'll find all of these very intricate scenes displaying time and how the evolution of automobiles and transport has changed over the years. Super cool, guys. And much like the other Smithsonian exhibits, we have a touch screen. Now on this one, we get to pick if we want to see videos, maps, or play a game. 
and this is central to as soon as you come into the America on the Move exhibit. So let's see what this one has. I kind of want to watch a video. progresses you find out more and more about the typical transportation in certain areas like for example the evolution in DC from people mainly on horses to bikes to streetcars That looks familiar. Remember guys, whenever we went to the Lexington and we got to go down into one of the engine rooms? Yeah, it kind of looked like this, except for a little bit bigger and a little bit more creepy. Behind me, this huge propeller actually belonged on a ship that sailed for about 10 different years. And it was a steamboat propelled driven ship. It actually sank at some point and a diver found it and recreationally was able to identify it and then was able to, with the crew, pull this thing up and it came straight here. Have you ever wondered why you, when you order something from overseas, sometimes it takes so long to get here? It's because it comes over in shipping containers and all of these facts are really interesting all about the ships that bring them over, the containers themselves, and how much that they can carry. Did you know 350 bicycles fit in one container? So naturally, if you're getting a product that's this big, they're putting a lot in there and they're not shipping it until they get that thing full. That's why it takes so long. Yeah. I love how everything is put together in here to tell stories about how the different modes of transportation affected individual groups of people in their various situations. For example, on the road, hot rods, moving, going to school, normal things. That was super interesting and a pretty large exhibit. So now we're gonna go to the last exhibit on this floor, on this side, which is all about food and uh, we all know I like some food. We're going to kick off this exhibit with the Julia Child's Kitchen, a recreation of the actual kitchen where Julia Child's made some of her most infamous recipes. I was pretty floored by the simplicity of the design and how many things she really had. Look at all those pots and pans. It was insane and you could see it from multiple angles, which was pretty interesting to check out. Just past the kitchen, you move into a very large hall. When I got here, I was a little overwhelmed because there are so many facts to be found. Everything from production and packaging to nutrition is located in this single room, and it does take a little while to navigate if you're reading all of the signage. So leave a little bit of time in your schedule for this room if you enjoy food, for sure. And not to mention there's things from all over the world, so it's pretty fascinating all in itself. I just found some things I remember from childhood that are no longer in existence. And as silly as it seems, I took a picture of a McDonald's container. But do you remember when they had this or these? That's what I'm gonna say and check it out. I knew it was gonna happen. I went into the food exhibit and now I'm hungry. 
As we moved up the escalator, still on the east side, we walked into this area. It's a very small exhibit, it's a little darker, but it is about the Japanese internment camps, which I do encourage you to look into a bit more. There was one actually located in Arkansas, and I hope to one day visit. This gave me a little bit more insight as to what I could expect to find historically, and that's really cool to me, putting together the pieces of the puzzle so it all makes sense when I go visit. They even had this little interactive map that you could kind of see where these places were located and learn a little bit more about each one of them. So big, big benefit to coming into this one, even though it's a tiny exhibit. It's now time for us to go to American Stories! Inside this exhibit, I didn't know what to expect, but once I got there, I was floored. Some of the biggest, most iconic pieces are located within this gallery, and I was so excited because everywhere I turned, there was something that was definitely recognizable. Definitely need to go in here if you love pop culture. Can you imagine using that? That was a cell phone. Like, what? How? Like, it was a dash mount. You couldn't take it anywhere. It literally sat in your car, and only a few people had them. Mostly government officials. And let's just be real. Who remembers playing Oregon Trail when they were in school? On one of those. Yep, Oregon Trail. Where are you going to end up finding Archie Bunker's chair next to Muhammad Ali's gloves? Nowhere else. But right here in this room, you can find both within about a three feet span. Look at those gloves. A short walk across the hall and we enter the City of Hope. This is an extension of the African-American displays that are featured in the much larger African-American Museum. They tackle some pretty difficult subject matter, but they do it in a way that is very comprehensive for the entire family. You can go in here and learn a lot about certain movements and have a different perspective that you might not have while walking through the much larger exhibit because it's such a controlled focus. I did notice that by going to both galleries that I found things in here that I didn't see at the other museum. So visiting both is definitely recommended and it will not disappoint you. You'll walk away from this one understanding a little bit more about the movement and things that were going on at the time. Now, one thing I do like about this particular exhibit though, is it does have tents that you go into and shows you the actual structures and things like that. So you get a better comprehension and understanding of the movement and how they set up these cities and these posts. Now, whenever you're going through, of course you hear the voices, the music, things like that of the movement itself, and lots of political posters combining the hope for freedom and anti-racism and some really powerful messages. that this is a pretty dark subject matter this particular gallery was one of my favorites and I think that was because the way that it was put together it really intrigues you the colors keep you moving the details the facts they're put literally everywhere within here and so you're very engaged in the entire exhibit which makes it a wonderful interactive place to be and spend potentially an entire day because there's so much going on 
This exhibit takes you throughout the years. It shows you all the various uniforms that were worn throughout the ages and throughout the different wars and gives you a brief history of each and every one of those areas. But it also gives you a time frame reference so that you can learn a little bit more about each place. Keep in mind, many of the things you will find within this gallery are going to tackle war itself. So if you are a bit squeamish, I would recommend passing on this one. However, if you're a history buff like I am, coming here you get to see some of the actual things that were involved in some of America's most iconic and somewhat tragic events. Like this right here, it was from the World Trade Center and seeing it just brings a feeling and emotion to you if you remember watching on TV on that terrible day or being actually involved in some way. It's really good to see these kind of things though because from the past we learned to make a better future so I definitely encourage you to at least give it a shot. So can you honestly remember where you were on 9-11? That last part that I just went past makes you question that and see if you remember where you were. I remember I was in Ardmore, Oklahoma, whenever that happened, and it was on all day long, and I just watched in disbelief, not knowing what was going on or understanding. And that's Next on this level is the Gunboat Philadelphia, which you can see behind me, but let's go get a closer. asking is this the real boat and what is its significance well this thing was afloat after 160 years and yes this is the original boat it was actually brought in to put on display after being displayed for 25 years at Lake Champlain already now this became one of the first exhibits in the military Smithsonian exhibit in 1965 and it's so old and you can see the history on it. It's insane to see that this thing could still float knowing that it has these huge crevices and cracks in it, but it's really, really big. It seems as though we have found some presidential things, like this, for example, which was George Washington's chair. Considering it is as old as it is, it's probably been redone, but this used to sit right by his bed. So our first president, a chair, wow. Yeah, these are Eisenhower's golf clubs. Look at the little socks. They're red, white, and blue. It gets better. Look. It's the original teddy bear. That's right. The presidential teddy bear for Teddy Roosevelt. Ah. There might be a lot of top hats, but that particular top hat was the one that Lincoln wore on the night that he went to the Ford Theater and was assassinated. So that's something that is one of their most treasured, iconic pieces here in the Presidential Gallery because it does have such significance and importance. This entire section is dedicated to the first ladies who have served our countries and had pizzazz and style that they brought to the White House. Everything from their gowns, the dishes that they've picked out, the first ladies have contributed a personal touch to our experience. Okay, we're back at the Batmobile, which means we're going west. We're gonna go check out what's on this side 
and uh, we've already been here like a while so this is not one of those places you go through quickly at all what better place to start than the inventor of Simon? He has a display as soon as you come into the western area and show some of these other things that he worked on. He was the father of the video game, so to speak. So, really cool way to start in the west. And being inspired by inventors, we're going to go to the place of invention and uh, find out what all is in here. They have like a learning lab and several different areas that are going to show us some really cool inventions. For this interactive exhibit, we get to use this touch table to register our own icon on here. When we're finished, we click. So basically, all we do is we flip over these little tiles, and then it takes a picture of it. So, of course, I'm going to make a bunny. Yeah. Well, that was fun and interactive. And now, we're moving on. So in the Bronx, we can scratch our own records. We can look at these awesome turntables that are pretty much awesome, I'm just saying. Or we can go over here and read about the people, the place, and the actual invention of hip hop music through the turntables. So this is a different kind of invention that you wouldn't necessarily think of when you're thinking of just inventing things and putting little pieces together. Nope. This is the invention of a cultural icon, rap. We watch movies all the time, but we don't think about the science that came behind them and making them how they are now, especially with today's films. But something as simple as Technicolor changed the world to make it accessible to all of the cool features like the 3D technology that we have now. This is a simplistic version of how Technicolor works. Spark Lab, which is a hands-on exhibit that you can actually build things and do cool stuff. Yeah. inventing cool stuff in there and uh, I just felt a little weird because I was by myself so inviting myself to somebody else's party is a little strange just saying oh wow this is an elaborate dollhouse Next is the object project. Now, I don't know exactly what this is, to be honest. It says people, innovative things, social change equals life as we know it. So, hmm, curiosity peaked. Once we show you the item, you'll have 15 seconds to consider and make your bid. Check your screen for the cost of other common items from the same year. Then, make your bid. Let's get started. Here's the first item, a pulsar. No idea where we're going. I see a McDonald's sign. Okay, cool, let's go. Following my already hungry stomach to the McDonald's sign, I quickly learned this was not a McDonald's display. There were all sorts of things in here, in fact, and so many, in fact, that I didn't even know where to start, so I just picked a wall and started walking around. In here, you will find so many interesting things that lead you through a timeline of sorts, but don't 
don't always make sense as to why they're in the same room together. There's tech, there's business, there's globalization, there's so many things. Just pick a wall and start going and let your imagination explore. It's such an interesting compilation in this area because you have Selena's jacket and only a few feet away the crash test dummies. I remember both of them like they were yesterday and now they're side by side in some weird juxtaposition and you can't help but just have a little bit of a smile knowing that these things are important enough to be here and yet they're part of my past and my history. And here is something else really cool. A little planter's peanut. I have no idea. I have to work in this little space. And manage a cat food company? I'm not sure. Basically every answer I step into one of these colored blocks and it shows me on the screen stepping and making my choice. So that's how this works. I don't know why it has to be cat food though. <laughs> counter tells us that 211 adults and 59 children have stepped on that thing today to be counted as an official number of people entering the exhibit. For this one, we're going to have to walk into the vault and here they keep all of the interesting currency that's on display. And there is a lot of it, things I've never seen before in my entire life, right here for you to look at but all behind some very thick glass, so don't get any kind of ideas. Well, the value of money was short-lived. It was cold in there, and it was kind of a small exhibit. So, up the escalator we go. We're now going to an exhibit that says, within these walls, one house, five families, 200 years of history, and this is it. Where else are you going to find a huge house inside of a museum? Okay, so you might have found some at some other places too, but none are quite like this. This tells the story of five different families who all lived in a single home and how over time the home evolved and changed with them. And the history is so rich here that I understand why they put this house in here, definitely. As you move throughout this exhibit, you can see into the house itself, but it also has these little red buildings that are recreations of the home. And it tells you about the advancement of the home and what was changed in the home and how the families adapted to whatever was going on with the style and the culture around them. And then of course, you have these big viewpoints so you can actually see in after you've read about them. Something else kind of nice in here is you can find these little signs that say touch where you can actually feel of things. You're not supposed to touch it unless it's labeled touch. you to question yourself how much do you know about the history of your home and it's very true a lot of people move into homes that have this rich history and they have no idea so if you live in an older home you should find out as we moved on to the next exhibit I found this how did we become us I was really curious as to what could be inside of here really didn't know the doors were kind of sealed off and you had to walk around before you actually got into the display but whenever I arrived it was really neat guys there were a lot of smaller things in here which really told the story of us as americans as a whole this 
exhibit challenges us to learn a little bit how we became America through immigration and the people who have come here and brought their rich culture and how over time that has evolved into the fabric that is America. So there's lots of different exhibits with lots of artifacts, um, several different immigration patterns from the early colonial days, and then some really cool stuff that we're going to check out over there. all the confetti to American democracy. Yeah, there's a whole haul of it. campaigns and causes and how people pursued those things and information about them and there's just tons and tons and tons and tons like this and all the way down to small things like these I could be here a while and we have made it back to the main lobby where there's only one more thing for us to look at and it happens to be behind this. So that last exhibit, I couldn't film, but it was the original American flag. And it's awesome. And uh, it's basically so fragile it can't hang anymore. It will completely disintegrate. And they have gone in and reworked it a little bit to make it a little bit more sturdy, but still now it has to lay flat. So that exhibit was talking about it. And then it's actually laying there and it's huge. Like, I had no idea that each star was like two feet. That was a great day at American History. Now, off to another exciting adventure. So, if you have had fun with me today at American History, leave a thumbs up. Make sure that you hit that little red subscribe button and check out tomorrow's adventure. <laughs>